I've never clubbed in my life. But it, huh? huh? Mm. So we go zoo. But, you can huh? do it tonight. Let's go. Okay. Suddenly, I'm nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm nothing with no one. It felt like I lost years of mm. my life. Mm. But why I cannot play Beyblade? Yeah. Why 30 year old man cannot play Beyblade? Welcome back to the Hot Pot where we hop into different transitions in life. I'm Q. I'm Nick. I'm Joey. And today's episode is a special one. Mm. Q and I are in our final year of being 20. <gasps> and Nick is 30 already. So yeah. we're going to be leaving our 20s behind. And we're going to prepare ourselves for the next decade. The big three. We're going to dive into some of our biggest achievements and regrets. What we liked, what we didn't like, what worked for us, what didn't. As well as the lessons learned along the way. Can I just say, right, that so far, right, I feel like I'm very excited for the decade. Mm. More than when I had just turned 20. But people always say that the 20s are the most exciting times. It's like the best decade. <laughs> Look at your faces. <laughs> All of us like, actually, no, it was the worst. The 20s are chaotic, a bit uncomfortable. Mm. Like the discomfort is a big part of the journey. Yeah. But then 30s is when you start to really settle in. But then the bigger life commitments start to kick in. Mm. I did not like turning 20. Yeah. Oh my god, I loved it eh. The moment I hit 25, then the lower back pain came. Uh, 25? Yeah. 25 honestly downhill already. My lower back pain started getting worse. My acid reflux. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, no. 25 is very young. Eh. 25 yeah. is not when these symptoms no, no, normally. No. Okay, not none of present. your fitness junkies, <laughs> normal folk like us, a lot of people tell me it's downhill from here. Mm. And I'm like, oh my god, this is terrifying. So that's probably also why I started yoga. I was like, okay, mm. I need to um lubricate my limbs. Do you guys feel your age? I think so. I think 30 is a correct number. Like, if I met myself on the street, right? <laughs> what is correct number? If I met myself on the street, I'd be like, this guy 30. You make sense as a 30-year-old. Yeah. Like, if you say 30, I'd be like, yeah. To be fair, I feel like I've been 30 for a while. I was going <laughs> to say that too. I feel like you've been like, here. For In a few aspects? years, even physical appearance, right? From when I was very young, people always said that I look older than... 13 going on 30. <laughs> Dude, you know, like, in secondary school, people called my nickname was Retain Kia. Huh? Even though I never retained. Because I them tall, right, last time. So then I was like taller than all the upper set people, but I still wearing short pants. Oh, so then they're like, hey, you retain. Yeah. Uh. Damn, you old Set. since secondary school. Uh. I old since primary school. Oh, right. So your 20s are supposedly, right, according to people, uh, people say, supposed to be your defining decade. Do you agree? I think that is what society painted. To some extent, it is true because a lot of milestones are packed in these 10 years. Mm. True. Like uni... First job, getting married. They always made it seem that after you hit 30... The rest of your life is the same. Yeah, it's just like coasting. Mm. Like you're just coasting already. In their 20s, people usually experience their first heartbreaks. And then you realise who you are as a person, the friends you want to keep, the kind of job you want to have. I feel like in every aspect in life, like politics, finance, we start to learn who we are. And sometimes these lessons don't come until late 20s. So I feel like a lot of us are still going through it. We're still learning. I mean, I'm still learning who I am, what I like, what I don't like. Don't say a lot of us. Your 20s, how good or not? <laughs> I don't really remember what my 20s are. Ah, see, oh, I knew it. Actually, it's a blur. Like. <laughs> it's a blur. <laughs> yeah, oh, in case you're like, what? Yeah. I remember major lows. I feel everything a lot, always. But I genuinely don't really remember a lot of key moments in my life. Now, you know how there's like, before Jesus' death and after death, right? <laughs> I, I see before therapy and after therapy in my oh, I thought, I thought your that's husband. My <laughs> oh my gosh. That's my timeline. All right. And life before therapy seems so difficult. Like now, I love discomfort. It's a moment for me to realize what I like and what I don't like. Mm. And I think that's your 20s. Like a big chunk of your 20s is figuring that out. Mm. And if you don't like uncertainty, then it's going to be very difficult, obviously. And that's mm. why... I did not like my 20s because things were changing. Mm. But then after I realised that, you know, I had to let go a lot of my trauma I had, I'm like, oh, actually, I know what I like now. So, like, come at me lah, it's okay. Mm. Yeah. You all got experience quarter life crisis? Many, many times. I feel like every two to three years I experience one time. Uh. It always happened because I don't know what to do with my life and mm. that means my career because... For the longest time, right, I tied my career and my self-worth to who I am and my identity. Mm. Mm. I had 
my first and only quarter life crisis after my last breakup. Mm. It was like my first big breakup like of my life. And then immediately after that, I also left um a job that I was quite like attached to. Then it's after similar. that, I was like, hey, how? How, how? Actually, same. Yeah. It happened all at once. Everything just charges at you at one go. So I think maybe that's why we can't really remember anything because we didn't have time to process. process. And it wasn't like it happened, then this stage happened. It, just, it happened, 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 happened. Everything happens at once. Mm. It just happens concurrently. Whereas like in secondary school, it's like four years. Mm. Yeah. Then poly, three years. Yeah. So there are a lot of big transitions that adults face that causes quarter life crisis, such as job dissatisfaction, relationship problems, social or family expectations. You know that you mentioned that, right? One of the biggest moments for me was dealing with my parents' divorce. My whole life, like the, the foundation is very strong because my family is great. You know, I cannot relate to any of the things my friends complain about. And then suddenly you get hit with the, oh, my parents are going to separate. And I didn't realize how big of a part that security had to play in how I feel secure in my life. It shook my world. Uh. Mm. Yeah, that really affected me in a way that I didn't know it could. When was this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but somewhere in your 20s. Early 20s. Uh. Early 20s. Early 20s. Ah, early 20s. Okay. I think for me, it was really just that, that big breakup. So early in my 20s, um, I was in a committed relationship mm. as I grew a bit older and a bit wiser than my frontal lobe developed, mm. right? And I realized that like I felt very stuck in this relationship. But mm. then like at the same time, cause like wow, everything settled already, then very hard to like unsettle. Mm. So then there was a very uncomfortable period where I had to like extract myself from that situation, then like unravel everything that I had Unpack, worked out. Uh. And yeah. I had worked full up to yeah. that point. Wow, it was a whole mess. Then like, wow, really like crisis. Wow, now how are... Uh, at that point of time, I was working in a fun job, but that paid terribly. Um, <laughs> so wow. like, I had to like navigate career also. Yeah. 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 Mine was also losing my fun job. In the same period, I broke up with my ex. My ex was also kind of like my best friend, right? So I didn't just lose my job, I lost my partner, I lost my best friend. Yeah. And I would say that fun job, right, really was kind of like my identity. Mm. Yeah. Because people would always ask me about it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, how's your job? Like, it looks so fun. Like, oh, you're doing this video, you're on this video and stuff like that, right? And then suddenly, I'm nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm nothing with no one. And it felt like I lost years mm. of my life. And it took me two years to heal. Damn. So that was, I think, my biggest quarter life crisis where I felt this huge sense of loss. So yeah. I think the common thing is Break relationships. Up, as much as people say your first happens in your like when you're 16 to 18, right? Mm. Your 20s, the first are more intense. Yeah. And I think this is where we start to learn financial literacy. Mm. And that's very scary. I don't know about Nick feels like he started banking at like four years old. Investments. Yeah. Like he got Savings Bitcoin account. before it was ex it existed. Yeah. <laughs> He'll say he played with Bitcoin as a baby. <laughs> early, early on before like, I had any commitments, right? then I would spend quite like recklessly or so. Mm. So then it was really a case where like middle of the month, eh? yeah, I got no money. Oh my God. Did you have the floating $20? Sorry? No. That means between you and your friend, right? Like, yeah. like, hey, can you let me $20? Then no. the next month is like, hey, can you let me $20? So this $20 just keeps floating around. No, I don't have floating $20, but I got the, like, can transfer me $1 so I can withdraw the last $20. Oh my god, yeah! <laughs> oh, okay, that one have, that one have. First, you got $19 in your yeah. bank account, then minimum withdrawal yeah, is $20. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I remember that. And then last time, got no pay now. So yeah. I must go to the ATM and then press oh his god, number, yeah. transfer the money. Then after that, I must take out my card. Then he put his card in the control. Yeah. Question part! In the spirit of today's episode, we have three photos from three different stages of our 20s and we have to guess which stage each photo is from. So for those who are listening to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and me listen, tune in on YouTube to see the photos from our youth. I'm so nervous. I'm ready. I think very obvious. Yeah, it will be, but I'm just uh, scared of the uh, photos. Wing it, wing it. Okay, come. Um, Joey first, right? Wow. Oh, very far. Can zoom a bit, right? Okay, I know already. Okay, I, I come, can we, I come. Can we go closer? Yeah. <laughs> We're very serious. Hey, what the hell? Okay, I think I know it. 
Why hers a bit hard lah? Because she looked the same the yeah. whole entire decade. Okay. Back. 27, <gasps> 21, 25. No! Nailed it! <laughs> yeah! Totally I'm totally wrong. You know why I know? Oh my god, you totally... <laughs> I'm totally wrong. I subscribed to you when you were 21. This photo is literally taken one day after I broke up with the ex. Wait, the 21. Anna. Well, you look glowing eh. That's why. Oh, and funny, funny story, funny story. He saw that photo. Then he tell my best friend, Joe is faking her smile. I know it. Ew, <laughs> shut up, ex. Hey, last time <laughs> your YouTube handle is what? We Rainbow. Yeah, yeah. We Rainbow. That's the We Rainbow's era, right? Okay, move next. on, move on. Who is next? I'm very excited. Q, ah? Uh? Uh, mine damn easy. Okay, okay. This one I confirm no. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> the 21 very obvious because of the choker right but we the... both have a choker the 21 don't say don't spoil our cue <laughs> okay in 3 ah, 2 ah, 1 ah, ah. A is 25 B ah. is 27 C is 21 ding I ding ding I feel like I saw the 25 photo recently no that was very long ago okay. move on to oh my Nick. god I'm very excited for this I Nick them obvious one ready? okay ready yeah okay, okay, 3 okay. 2 1 uh, <laughs> Wait, that... Three, two, one, go. Okay, answer is A, I was 21. Yes. B is 27. Yes. And C is 25. Yes. So A was my first day on radio. B was when I got engaged. Dude, you, you mewing you, or you like... You... Should I have picked this photo? Jess is giving yeah, me the la, so obvious. Uh, so obvious. Then C was uh, solo traveling yeah. in India. Yeah. yeah, can tell. When I was discovering myself. Well, so I was the biggest loser. Yeah, I, I got all correct. Ah. Everything. Yeah, he really all correct. Yeah. You then? Fun. Since you talk so much about our struggles, right? Mm. Mm. Do you guys have any regrets? Like maybe wild nights, mistakes, like haha, kind of wake like, up in the morning and then like, oh, f why did I do that? Jess and I, we discussed before, we've only ever been in committed relationships. So mm. never did date around before. Uh, oh, my, oh my god. A lot of my friends say that to me, you know. To me, it's like, you found your person so early on. Isn't that such a blessing? It is lah. To be yes. honest, I was <laughs> so excited. Like, while I was mourning my very first breakup, right? Then part of me was like, oh my god, I'm so excited. Because now, I'm going to play. Mm. Then, oh my god, I damn humpty. I cannot play. Like, I really, like, I yeah, thought yeah. I can play, but I cannot. Yeah. You think you will play? I don't know. I feel like you won't play. Like, I feel like you won't play also. Play. I, 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 I don't I have it in me to play. I got no risk. I, <laughs> I got no game. Just want to say, I also don't play. <laughs> just, Ma, play. just more than Joey and I. There's nothing wrong with playing. Obviously, yeah. Nothing obviously. wrong with playing. But I think I'm too... Like, if we play, then I'll love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the moment I lie on your chest, right? I'm yeah. in love already. Yeah. Yeah. Did you party in your 20s? Got la. Got, got. Can, I've never clubbed in my life. But it, huh? So we go so no, I've uh, never been drunk in my sometimes life. Sometimes you'll regret. I never yeah, got actually, my regret is I've never been drunk also. You can do well, it tonight. Let's go. Okay. But I just realized something. A lot of us don't really regret things that we did before, but mm. the things that we didn't do. I feel like the very common and healthy narrative that like people our generation have now is that you don't regret like things that you've done. Yeah. Because everything that you have done, right, no matter how miserable you were at that point, then it has all mm. led you to this moment. where you are now. La. Yeah. And if you are still feeling miserable, that means you are just on your way to being happy. Mm. Wow. Perspective. May, the reality is that that may not be true. You might just be miserable, miserable your whole life. But then I think it's a healthier way to look at it yeah. like that. La. Is there anything you guys would have done differently in the last 10 years? Mm. For me, it's working out. La. I think my mental health and happiness really like went up a lot because I started working out and people don't know the importance of moving around. Like taking a little walk, right? Mm. Changes my mood. Eh. Mm. Yeah, so I think that I neglected that for the longest time and only started focusing on it two years ago. The one thing I would, I wish I would have done differently is to care less about what people think. Mm. Like scared to post something or scared to do something, this project, because I was afraid of what people would think of it. And as a result, like it might have slowed my progress mm. or exploration. Why was I so afraid? And why did I put so much weight on other people's opinions? I feel like for me, it was probably being more intentional with spending time with like people I care about. The three of us have a lot of friends, I would say. Mm. Mm. But what if people 
to, more friends, huh? Yeah, because a, a lot of people in their oh. 20s, they also have this common issue of not having their tribe. At this age, most people have already found their people. They're not really letting other people into their lives anymore. Every time I see a TikTok about like, oh, you know, send this to that person you think about. And then I see comments, people like, I don't have anyone to send this to. A lot of people feel that way, right? Because a lot of TV shows paint a perfect picture, like friends. Like they expect that their 20s is going to be like that. You're going to have like a group of friends that... You meet every other day. Mm. But when you don't have that, it feels extremely painful, I guess, from from that point of view. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like inherently, humans are social creatures. Mm. Like, you function better when you we have need to belong, friends or tribe yeah. or community. Yeah. But then at the same time, I also know people who like are very, very, very comfortable alone. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on to lessons that we've learned. Ooh. Shall we do it listicle style? <gasps> In number one. <laughs> Ooh. To me, my 20s was all about losing and finding myself over and over again. I feel like I've lost myself so many times. And the whole idea of who am I occurred so many times. Mm. And I think people expect it to happen lesser than it Mm. does. Life is all about finding yourself over and over again. I don't Mm. think we will ever settle on one and be that forever. That's terrifying to me. Mm. When I think about like what you said, right? It applies most to like work for me. Oh. I think a lot of people, they're like, oh, what, what's my job going to be? How, forever. Yeah, what's my mm. job going to be forever? What's the job that I'm going to do for like the next 20, 30 mm. years? So I feel like I don't feel pressure to like get it right the first time yeah. around. And what's right? Right is only your perspective. Yeah. Let's try other things. Mm. Yeah. For me, it's more about my self-worth. Mm. Like, I've always lost my self-worth because I always tie it to... Work or relationship. Work or relationship. Mm. Mm. And then only recently, I feel like I'm doing a lot of things for myself these days. I can go. You're never too young to be financially literate. Mm. So mm. the earlier you have some financial literacy, have an idea of what to do with your money and like things like that, right? The better. But at the same time, this is the decade for you to spend on experiences. Yeah. So if you just finish uni, right? And you're thinking, oh, should I save this $2,000 or go on a grad trip? Go on your grad trip. Because mm. that $2,000, right? Like... In your 30s, right? You can earn very fast. Yeah, you can never have another grab trip. You can never have yeah. another grab trip. There are a lot of instances where really like money can earn back on. Mm. But yeah. at the same time, you need it needs to be a conscious, informed decision when you are spending that money. Mm. Mm. Your turn. Hmm. I would say for me, it was stop trying to make the perfect choice and make the choice the perfect one. My biggest worry is making the right decision. Mm. Like, what if it's wrong? Then if it's wrong, then you will make it right, lah. You know what I mean? But like, I was, I was struggling because like, I don't want to make a mistake because if I make a mistake, then it might derail me like how many years or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's actually not that deep. Like, move, it's not the end, la, Yeah, it's right? not the end. Mm. It's not mm. the end. The next point that I have is, wow, well, it's more emotional, lah. Since you are so logical and the, you're the mm. finance mm. guy, mm. right? Mm. Let me talk about relationships, yeah. <laughs> All right. The person you're crying about now won't matter to you in five years' time. Relationship, mm. lah. Yeah. Like, if someone in your family die now at five years' time, still okay. matter, right? Yeah, I'm talking about relationships. <laughs> okay. This is <laughs> for the lover girls, lover boys out there. Like, mm. I think we are so hard on ourselves when relationships end. You are always surrounded by this person and suddenly when this person is gone, right? You lose your sense of self. Yeah. Mm. Maybe it's the art of detachment. I cannot remember what my life was like in my last relationship. Like, it's all a blur. Mm. I feel oh like it's God, a... I keep trying to think also, I cannot. Defense mechanism eh, amongst humans where like, you know, if it's a negative experience, right? You suppress. You really suppress and yeah. then like... Well, it doesn't serve me anymore, so... That's yeah, true, that's I think so. Yeah. And adding on to that, nothing that is meant for you will pass you by. That's my mm. mantra now. Mm. Whether it's relationship or work or experiences. Mm. I think the other bit for me is like, invest in your health. Get informed about like, good nutrition, proper workout routines or programs and things like that. Because these are the sort of things, right, that when you do in your 20s, it will give you a foundation for the rest of your life. I want to be able to do Asian squat when I'm 70. Yeah. Mm. Or like when you are 70, right, if you fall, the difference between like falling and dying or falling and like, oh, I managed to regain my balance. Like sprain my ankle versus dying. It's really what you do in your youth that... Mm. That yeah. determines that. Actually, one of the lessons I've learned recently is to look out for who my inner child comes out with. Inner child very interesting, eh? Inner child is really... She's all about the inner child. I'm oh, all about inner child. Yeah, yeah. Think about who your inner child comes out with the most and those are the people who you truly feel comfortable mm. with. Because mm. sometimes you don't realise also. And 
there are some friends that I don't mind being stupid with. You know, like yeah. I, I truly feel safe around you guys and I, I can be stupid and I know y'all won't judge me or even if you do, then okay lah. Mm. Like I'm not scared about it. And that's an identifier of like, oh, you feel safe around these people. And I think the older I get, the more I really want to only put my time into people that I can have for the rest of my life. Mm. Mm. The inner child thing very interesting because as recent as two days ago, <sighs> I was playing with my nephew. Then now he's into like tops, like you know the spinning top. Mm. Yeah. So then after that, I was like, oh my God, you will love Beyblade. <gasps> Let it rip! So then I went out to Shopee, right? And then I just bought a Beyblade Oh set. my God, that's so cute! Then, that's so, that's so, so then after that, I was yourself, like, okay, I bought it, so I bought it for him. Oh. But then I realized that, oh my God, I'm going to have so much fun playing with oh you also. Oh my God, that's so awesome. Then awful. when I was deciding, right, oh, which one to buy? Then I remember, I still remember like when I was in primary school, right, I just buy the Beyblade. Then I was always damn jealous like, Oh, people got the stadium. People, so I bought the stadium. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so I was like, yeah. Can I add on to that? Like my friends, right? Sometimes they'll ran- randomly suggest, hey, want to play block catching? <laughs> <laughs> and you're playing. <laughs> we didn't lah. Oh my God. <laughs> but deep down, I kind of want to play. I want to yeah. play block catching so badly. So I feel like, I don't know, I feel like um our generation, right? We forget to have fun. Forget to have fun a mm. lot because of like, there's so much of this pressure that's coming on from a very early age. You to score well in your exams you need to faster get married you need to BTO yeah. you need to find a job and things like that right Yeah. and then you are told to stop doing things for the sake of like oh this is a very childlike thing Yeah. Mm-hmm. but why I cannot play baby yeah. why 30 year old man cannot play baby when you start to earn your own like income and yeah. like you spend your own money really go and indulge your, your inner child so yeah. I still remember like last time when I was young right if I want to eat one stupid McFlurry right I need to like jump through so many hoops to mm. eat the McFlurry eh. Then I'm like, what, every three weeks eat one McFlurry. Then now, so it's like, if you want to go eat a McFlurry, right, go and buy yourself a McFlurry. Yeah. 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 Okay. Heal your inner child in your right. 20s. So what do you guys think are some ways to cope with the anxiety that people feel during their 20s? I looked at my life as a pie chart. <laughs> you hear before? 34, right? I know. No, I have never heard. I know about your graphs, your... Google Sheets, but not a pie chart. Your life is 100%, right? Then you need to identify what are the areas of your life that is worthy of being on this pie chart. So for you, right, it was 50% relationship, 50% work. Mm-hmm. Mm. Then you will realize that, eh, shouldn't my family be on this pie chart also? Mm. Shouldn't my friends be on Shouldn't this? your friends be on this pie chart also? So then you start to realize what are the areas that you are spending too much time on. Damn. Then when you're able to prioritize, then it's very clear what you should be doing and tackling already. Why have one pie when you can have 10? This is not how that works. Okay, but what, what, what a logical and practical yeah, so that way was, of doing that was things. my system. Mm-hmm. Like to really like figure out like, okay, what is the problem that I'm going to solve tomorrow? And what is the problem that can wait until next week? How about you, Joey? For me, it's everyone is struggling too. We compare ourselves to people online now, especially in a day of social media. And when we compare, we're comparing our worst days to someone's best yes. day. And that makes no sense. And it wasn't until I had chats with friends that I sort of envied. And they said the same thing back to me. And I'm like, eh, we are both just doing what we can, you mm. know? And everyone is just doing what we can. Honestly, with social media, it's made our lives a lot harder because now we expect so much more of ourselves. Mm. by comparing ourselves to what is online. Mm. But what is online is a lot of it is like a facade. Mm. Yeah. I think for me, right, a lot of people feel anxious because they have so many goals at the same time. It's kind of like a road to failure. Yeah. Because mm. you only have this amount of time. You only have 24 hours in a day. Like, I think people should learn to take their time. Mm. And I guess looking at a different timeline from everyone else's. Mm. Yeah. So we've all been through quite a bit in our 20s, mm. as I'm sure most people would have. Um, to summarize, any uh, final uh, words of wisdom? I would say to not chase happiness, but chase peace. Mm. Because happiness is always fleeting. It's always, you can be happy one day and the other, you might not be. Yeah. But if deep inside you, you're at peace with who you are and where you're at, you'll be alright. Mm. Mm. I would say nothing truly defines you unless you let it. So like we are afraid that our mistakes will define us. Mm. But it's only if you keep harping on it and you let that define you. We are all going to make mistakes and actually make the mistakes. Through the mistakes, you learn who you are, what you like, what you don't like and how to move forward. 
Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Hot Pot. You can also listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Listen. And please let us know in the comments down below what your 20s were like or if you're going through it, how it's going so far. We love reading your comments. If you haven't already as well, do remember to turn on notifications so you never miss a video and subscribe as well. Mm. And we will see you in the next episode. Bye. 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 I played more than mm. you guys because I was single for a long time. I, I am single. Do you have an announcement to make? No, no, no. There were mornings when I wake up and I'm like, why do I do that? Why do I behave like that? Then it's all caught in video. Who is this? <laughs> don't have, don't have her. Huh? <laughs> I've never woken up in a stranger's bed before.